Hello and welcome to another video from Dazatron's Diorama Llama and this is a video on how to make a low relief of the Autobot spaceship called the Ark after it crash landed into Mount St Hilary. So this video I have to warn you is not aimed at beginners like my previous videos. So if you haven't watched any um, of the content on this YouTube channel I would suggest that you go back and have a go at some of the other videos, um, build up your skills and then come back to this one um, as you'll find it much easier at that point. So as you can see here I've got quite a large piece of styrofoam. Um, I've measured a billy bookcase. Mine is quite a narrow um, bookcase. It's not the, the wide version that you can pick up from Ikea. So I've measured that and I've cut the styrofoam to size already. It's a two inch thick piece of styrofoam. And as you can see here, I've made a template of the arc image that I'm using. And I've printed that out. I will make this template available um, on my YouTube channel. So yeah, do, do look out for that. So I've printed it out. I've printed it onto two sheets of A4 so that gives you around about an A3 size piece of paper which you can then attach to your styrofoam. So as you can see here I'm just using a regular pencil to then press through the top of the image so it transfers the image from the paper to the styrofoam itself and now I've removed the template and I'm just going over those lines a little bit heavier just so we can see the details a little bit more clearly and that will help us when we come to do our first cut. So here you can see my transfer. If you look carefully, the lines are not perfect, they're a little bit wobbly, but it, it does it just gives you a starting point really when you come to sculpt the work. So what I'm doing now, I'm just taking a Sharpie pen and I'm just kind of masking out, if you like, or sketching out where my first cut will be. So this will probably be the deepest cut in the piece. So I'm using a sharp knife just to cut around the edge. And then I'm just taking away in smaller pieces. So you can see I'm probably taking about a centimetre um, pieces at a time so a centimeter thickness really it's just a bit easier to work with that way so i'm cutting through at different angles making sure that i go back around the outline of the arc again and it's really important that you do keep your knife sharp at this point It's quite difficult to remove all of this in one go. So you can see I'm just taking little chunks at a time. And do be careful as well when you're cutting from the side that you don't go too far into the part of the relief that you want to keep. So in this case, the arc and this kind of rocky formation. So once I've taken this first layer, and then going to go back around the edge again and I'm going to take off another layer until I'm happy with the, um, the thickness really of the part that's remaining. So at this point we don't have to be too neat because we will kind of correct that as we go along and we can kind of sand things down or file things then if we need to. So I'm just repeating that process again. So I'm just kind of pressing in quite deep actually around the edges. Of course, I do want to make sure that I don't go all the way through. And then I'm removing again about another centimeter or so, pushing as far in as I can from the side. And then again, just removing smaller pieces until I get a shape that I'm happy with. So as you can see here, I've got this first cut. It's very untidy, as you can tell, and that's absolutely fine. So you can see I've also left um, 
a kind of a ridge or a step at the back and this will be where the main things in the background will go so i'm just repeating this process of kind of cutting around the edge then this is a bit more tricky because these are kind of you know cylinder shapes if you like or circular shapes so what i'm doing here is i'm just i'm just taking the knife at an angle and i'm just kind of cutting away at a slight angle so I'm not going in too deep at the moment and just removing again small sections just so it gives that impression that the arc itself is kind of sticking out if you like of this um, this mountain kind of background which I think it was a volcano if I remember right so I'm now just creating the the curve of the main ship so again I'm cutting at an angle and I'm trying to keep um, the knife flush with the edge so you can see there the top of the arc I'm trying to make sure that the the knife doesn't go past that really so I'm not actually cutting that top area of the arc there on the side so I'm just keeping things quite at a slant it's a nice kind of it's kind of almost like a curved edge really and if you look at the um, the image on the screen you'll see what I mean by that it's really important that you have that reference material at hand. Um, I had it by me all the time to really keep checking backwards and forwards to see where I'm cutting or where I need to leave um, as it is really. So I'm just using a small file here just to smooth that out a little bit. Again, I'm not too fussed about um, getting this really tidy at this point. I just want to make sure the angles are looking reasonably correct. So in this section here, again the same process as before. I'm not cutting in too deep this time though. So it's quite a shallow cut. And then again, working at an angle. And when you work at an angle all the way around, you'll have a little bit left in the middle, which is obviously protruding. So you can then just kind of cut away those bits to kind of flatten it out a bit more. So some nice big cuts here. Just again to get that shape of the arc itself. And that's what's going to give the impression that this is actually kind of nested inside um main centillary so you can see also i've left um the rock at the bottom and again that rock is sticking up higher than the bottom of the arc itself so you're trying to get that 3d quality so here just some little cuts using the very point of the knife so i'm keeping that kind of circular shape because I don't want it to be end up looking too much like a, a hexagonal. And then I'm only cutting in at a slant on one side. So again, I'm trying to give the impression that these kind of funnels, if you like, um, are hollow. Then that would be very difficult to do with a knife and with styrofoam, just because of the nature of the material. So by cutting at a slant, it gives the impression that it's a funnel or a cylinder without actually having to have, if you like, a base to the bottom of that cylinder. So again, I'm just cutting away the edges. You can see on the right, I've completed that one already. So I'm trying to make the second kind of funnel 
of the same really. So what I'm doing here, I'm using the end of a file, just a very small flat ended file to scrape away. It's very difficult in these kind of small areas to cut away with a knife. So I'm using the file to essentially rub away the, um, the styrofoam. And that actually works quite well. It does give you quite a textured effect, but um, you can kind of sand that down a little bit later. Or we'll use the file again just um, with less pressure. So you can see now I've managed to kind of carve out or hollow out that section. And so now again I want to give the impression that this funnel is sticking out. So I'm just using the knife to just create again that slant and then using the the file making sure of course that I don't cut into the circular part so here you can see it again I'm trying to leave the part of the the kind of the rock formation on the right hand side there I want that sticking up um, and then the kind of I suppose the the path that leads up to the arc I want to have that more indented so I'm cutting that away and then using a large file this time to really kind of push that back So again, this is, it's a low relief, so we're not creating a sculpture, which is kind of fully three-dimensional. We're giving the impression of three dimensions. And you can see that here, it's still quite flat. It's not fully three-dimensional, but it's giving the impression now of these different kind of levels. So we've got this rocky formation on the left, which is kind of at the forefront. Um, or in the foreground and then you've got the arc in the middle and then the kind of the the background so again I just want that kind of rock formation at the front just to stick out a little bit more so I'm just cutting back these kind of funnels just so that kind of sticks up a little bit it's not very deep what I'm cutting here but just that little bit of an edge just gives the illusion then that it's it's sticking out a bit more so i'm now cutting out the entrance to the arc so really this should be cut a bit lower if you look at the um the reference material it should actually be further down than that but I, i've i've gone with this I think it just looks better on my version really um, just because of the way I'd already shaped the arc it just seemed to kind of fit better where it is now so I've created the the main outline I've just kind of again created a cut and then I want to create this impression that this um, there's a kind of a tunnel there really So again, it's all about cutting at angles. You can see that it's the angle that gives the impression that's going again actually further than what it is. And this is what I mean by practicing with some of the other videos on the YouTube channel. Get used to using a knife, get used to using styrofoam. And then once you feel a bit more confident in kind of creating kind of rock formations or sculpting some detail into the styrofoam, this will help with this particular make. This is a floristry knife that I'm using, um, which I find really useful for styrofoam. 
obviously feel feel free to try out different kind of knives and scalpels and see what works for you but i found because this has a longer blade i find it really useful for getting into those kind of um those fiddly areas especially if you're getting some nice kind of flat cuts or slanted cuts The difficulty with working with styrofoam is that you can't really add back onto it. It's not like you're using uh, clay where you know you can stick another piece on and you know cover up your mistakes a little bit. Um, you can use filler, and I'll show you how to do that later, just to kind of fill in some smaller areas. But you don't want to do that to any large areas because uh, you'll find that quite tricky to use. So there is room for error, but it's slight error. So what I'm doing here again is just giving the impression that this rock formation is quite jagged. I've got these different parts kind of sticking out and just kind of creating that texture of rocks. And you'll, you'll see me do that before in some of the other videos that I've already mentioned. But in this case, I'm not going in so deep because it's a low relief. I'm just trying to give the impression of texture. So again, it's the same process. We're cutting at different angles. And you just get a feel for it. That's the only thing I can say. The more you cut away the styrofoam, the the better the impression um, in terms of kind of rock faces. When, when you do your first rock face, you always think it's going to be a really difficult thing to do. And actually, it's quite instinctive and you get a feel for it in no time at all. So it's definitely worth just having a little play, have a go, maybe on a bit of an off cut of a piece of styrofoam and again if you've practiced any of the early videos on my channel you'll know what I'm talking about so I'm now using a um, another file from a mini file kit you usually get about five different files in these kits you can pick them up between um, three and four pounds really just from a, a normal hobby store uh, or DIY store so they are worth picking up because they're, they're great for getting into these kind of smaller areas and kind of creating extra detail. So where you might be finding it quite difficult to use the knife, then you can use these different file blades to kind of create this kind of texture. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of creating some deeper cuts in places until I'm happy really with the texture of this rock face. Now you can see here I'm using the lid of a, I guess it's kind of like a toy box really, or a um, storage box. And this is really useful just for kind of collecting all the bits of styrofoam that get pushed away. So it doesn't go everywhere. So it is useful to have something like this just to work on. So now I'm going to use the same technique on this smaller rock face. So as you can see, just starting from different angles and you know, that's always a good place to start. Just make a cut and see what happens really. Don't be too precious about it. Now I would say this all in all, took me gosh probably I would say six hours plus really so it's not a quick make this one that's why it's taken me a little longer to get this video out but it's definitely a satisfying build so I would encourage you to have a go So there's still quite a bit of work that needs to be done here, but I've pretty much got the main sculpt done there. So it's now starting to refine it a little bit, smooth things out, add in those kind of extra details. So I'm starting with the background with a larger file just to make sure that's completely smooth. Because if you remember at the beginning when I was making those initial cuts, it was very kind of rough and ready. So I want to smooth all of that out 
and get a nice flat surface. Now obviously I've shortened this video as much as possible but I'm also trying to keep as much of the making as I possibly can so you can see what I'm doing so it might help you when you come to make your own um, but of course I've had to shorten the video as well it was um, over three hours all in all um, so yeah so I don't think you'd want to keep watching this for that length of time So again, I'm just adding in these extra cuts now. And that, and that really is the thing with a rock face. The more cuts you put into it, the more texture you add, the, the better it looks really. So I'm just working my way down to the, to the bottom. I'm just neatening up those cuts around the edges in particular. So it's just kind of smoothing those out a little bit. And it's easier to do that with a knife at first and then to kind of go back in with the smaller files a bit later. So I'm just moving through the final stages of the sculpt and kind of mixing between the various files. So we're just working our way into the very corners now just making those edges a little bit sharper. So as you can see, yeah, I'm just using a nylon brush here just to remove any excess styrofoam. And the last thing we need to do is to add some polyfiller. Now you can use any type of filler, really. I'm just using a home brand there and a little bit of water to smooth it out and a rag just to kind of, yeah, get rid of any excess. I have found, yeah, using some small uh, tweezers tend to work really well. And again, you could pick those up in any hobby stores. But particularly a flat-ended uh, tweezer works brilliantly just to apply that filler. This filler that I'm using here takes 24 hours to dry. So you might want to use a different type of filler that, you know, is a bit quicker. But it really is up to you. And of course, just use a bit of water just to smooth out the surface and just get a nicer finish really before having to prep for the main paintwork. So you can see here, I've filled in the areas where it needed some of that filler, um, where I've got gaps or where I've made mistakes or just where there's a bit too much texture. And so we're coming towards the end of the video now. Um, and hopefully, you know i've inspired you to have a go i know as i said before it's more difficult than some of the other um how to make videos that are on this channel but it will really develop your skills um the end resort i think looks cool and i, don't know, I would hope that it would be something that you'd want to have on display with your transformer figures so yeah i would encourage you have a go yourself and you know Feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I'd love to hear further suggestions of future makes. This piece here has really challenged me and um, this is the most difficult one that I've made. So it's nice to keep challenging ourselves. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Do tune in again and do look out for the painting video which will be on my channel shortly. Bye then.